In this part of the lesson, we'll explain how to work with non-declared variables in VBA. We'll also describe some of the fairly significant problems you can encounter when working with non-declared variables, which basically makes them a terrible idea, particularly when you're first getting started in programming. Let's start by opening up the file that I've already downloaded and extracted. And then when we've done that, we can click the Enable Content button. This is the same example we've used in the previous two parts in the lesson, where we're calculating the body mass index for various characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The code that we've written already works by clicking these buttons. I can calculate the BMI and then clear the existing data. And if you want to see how that works, we can head to the Developer tab, open up the Visual Basic Editor, and see the same code we've been using for the previous two parts of the lesson. In the process BMI list subroutine, we've declared four separate variables and allocated a data type to each one. We have three doubles and one string. Declaring variables in this way provides your program with information about how much memory to allocate to hold the various values, and also tells it what type of data it should expect. So for example, I couldn't attempt to store some text in the weight in kilogram variable, which wouldn't make sense. You can see this information in the Locals window when you choose to step through a procedure. If I head to the View menu and choose Locals window, and then select my Process BMI List subroutine, followed by pressing the F8 key to begin stepping through it, we can see that in the Locals window, it tells us not only what value is currently held in those, these variables, but also what data type it should expect. Now, while it is good practice to declare variables, in VBA, declaring variables is actually optional. We can prove this simply by removing our variable declarations from this procedure and then checking to see if it still works. Let's reset the subroutine first with the reset button and then to remove our variable declarations rather than deleting them, let's comment them out. I'm gonna highlight at least part of each of these four lines. Then I'll head to the view menu and choose toolbars and then choose edit. This should make another toolbar appear at the top of the screen. You may find the first time you display this, it's actually floating around as part of the main window. So you can click and drag to position it at the top of the screen and then identify the comment block button. It's just to the right of the hand symbol and then click that button to convert those four lines into comments. If we now simply return back to Excel and try running the Calculate BMI subroutine again by clicking this button, we'll find that all the code generates the exact same results. So to the end user, there's no difference whatsoever whether we declared variables or not. Now, although everything appears to work as normal from the end user's point of view, there are some fairly significant differences going on behind the scenes. Let's prove that by starting to step through this procedure and have a look at what happens in the Locals window. If I press F8 to begin the process BMI list procedure and then look into the Locals window, we can see a few differences from what we saw last time. First of all, the type of these variables. This is the, the main significant difference. Because we haven't stated what data type to use, VBA has automatically declared each variable using the variant data type. Now, the variant data type is one which accepts any value of any type. So it could accept text, it could accept numbers, dates, etc. So the variant data type in itself can be quite useful. It, it certainly allows you to work with data in a more flexible way. But generally speaking, ideally, you want each declared variable to have one particular type. Because the variant data type can store any type of value, it means you've got no control over what type of information gets stored. So it might be possible at some point to accidentally store a piece of text in the weight in kilograms variable. And that would mean that later on when we attempted to perform this calculation, this wouldn't make sense. VBA also needs to identify the subtype of a variant variable. So the first time you allocate a value to a variable, let's see, as we step through this procedure, you should be able to see when I assign a value to the weight in kilograms variable, you'll see that the code has automatically worked out that it should be a double. Now there's a minor overhead involved in determining the subtype of variable. And because the subtype can change according to what value gets allocated to the variable, that overhead can affect multiple lines of code. The subtype of a variant variable can change throughout the course of a subroutine. So that can lead to some difficult to identify bugs. If you're expecting one type and for that type to be fixed, that's no longer the case. 
And it's also worthwhile mentioning that the amount of memory allocated to a variant variable may be more than you actually require. I'm just going to have a quick look back at the list of data types for VBA. Again, you can see this in the summary section at the end of this module, or if you prefer on the Microsoft Docs site. So for example, if we knew that we wanted to use a double and we declared the variable as such, it would be allocated eight bytes of memory to capture that value. If we just scroll down a little bit and look for the variant, variants using numbers actually allocate 16 bytes. Um, so double the amount of memory required to store the same piece of information. Now clearly some of these issues are more important than others. But nonetheless, it's clear that declaring variables and explicitly stating the type is definitely best practice. Now, even if you disagree with all the potential problems with using non-declared variant variables, you might be quite excited at the fact that you don't have to write a dim statement for each variable that you want to use. It's certainly nice to not have to perform all this typing each time you want to declare a variable. However, there is one still major potential pitfall of using non-declared variables, which I'll demonstrate now by first of all resetting my procedure. And then I'm going to bring back all of my variable declarations. So I'm going to select at least part of each of these lines and then uncomment these lines using this uncomment block button on the edit toolbar. Now, because the VB editor is configured by default to allow non-declared variables, even though I've declared these four explicit ones, there's nothing to stop me from accidentally or even deliberately making up new variable names on the fly. This can easily happen when you mistype variable names in your code. So for example, I've declared weight in kilograms as a double, but if I were to accidentally misspell weight in kilograms, let's pick this line here, BMI equals weight kg. Let's just transpose the two characters, E and I, to I and E. Now imagine this in a full page of hundreds of lines of code. At a glance, you wouldn't spot that you'd accidentally mistyped that variable name. Because the VBA editor allows you to use non-declared variables, you also wouldn't receive any error messages when you attempted to run the code. If I switch back to the Excel window, and let's just clear the existing BMI data, and then click the Calculate BMI button again, the code runs without throwing any kind of errors whatsoever. But clearly something has gone wrong here. Everyone's BMI has been calculated as zero, and the category therefore is underweight for everyone. The reason that happens becomes a little more clear if we switch back to the Visual Basic Editor and then step through this procedure using the Locals window. So let's select the Process BMI List procedure and press F8 to begin stepping through. Hopefully what you can see here in the Locals window is that although we've declared weight in kilograms explicitly and assigned it as a double, we've got a new variable called, well, weight misspelled in kilograms, which uses the variant type. So that value there, or that empty variable, gets used when we calculate the BMI. So you should be able to see when I use the F8 key to step through, because I'm using this empty variable here, the BMI result is always, always zero. And that's what's used then to calculate the BMI band and goes into the cell uh, in the BMI column in the worksheet. So clearly this is a problem. We definitely want to avoid this. Trust me, if you've ever had to tear your hair out trying to find misspelled variable names in a large procedure, this is not something you want to be doing. The simple solution to this problem is to always force us to declare any variables that we want to use, so that if we ever misspell a variable name, we get some kind of error message indicating that this is not valid. To do that, we can add a directive to the top of the entire module. So give yourself a blank line or two above this first subroutine at the very top of the module, and then type in two words, option explicit. This means now that for every single subroutine, every procedure in the entire module, I must declare every single variable that I want to use. And if I have a mistyped variable name or I try to make up a new variable name, as soon as I attempt to run the subroutine, I am warned that I have a non-defined variable. I get a fairly clear error message. But it's not the error message itself that's the useful thing. The really useful thing is that the VB editor will highlight within the subroutine the variable it thinks you have misspelt or attempted to use without declaring. So I can clearly see here, oh, that, that was clearly my fault. I had a typo. I misspelt the weight in kilogram variable. So I can simply edit that while the code is running to EI rather than IE. And then if I run the subroutine again, 
everything will work as normal and I can check that that's the case back in Excel. So clearly forcing explicit variable declaration is a good thing. It's such a good thing, in fact, that I'd like to make this the default for every future module we create using the Visual Basic Editor. If we switch back to the Visual Basic Editor, we can head to the Tools menu and choose Options. And then in the dialog box that appears, the second checkbox, Require Variable Declaration. If you check that box and then click OK, what this means now is for any future module you insert, the phrase Option Explicit will be written at the top of the module automatically. You can feel free to prove that by inserting a new module into the project and you'll see that Option Explicit appears there automatically. We'll be using explicitly declared variables extensively from this point on in the course, so probably the best thing to do at this point is to move on to the next part of the lesson which explains how to extend the scope of your variables.